Celsiologists, we are going to Mexico today. Just kidding, we're not going anywhere because my wallet says no. <laughs> I just thought I'd crack a joke considering a lot of my other vlogs have been traveling vlogs. <laughs> it's giving this illusion that traveling and eating is the only thing that I do all the time when the reality is that's not what business is like. There isn't the glamorous side of things, but 99% of the work that goes on in a business and 99% of the things that I do is not glamorous. Yeah, glamorous, glamorous. I don't know if you guys will find this vlog interesting this week, but I am staying put in Canberra for another month or two before I travel again. So I wanted to show you guys a week in my life as the owner of Celsiology, but showing the more mundane things that I do. I also wanted to talk about the things that are exciting me at the moment about the business and the things that Celsiology is planning and launching very soon, as well as things that are frustrating me at the moment and making me want to pull my hair out. 99% of the time, that's what I'm doing. I'm dressed a bit hood today and um that's because as much as i want to sit here and crawl in bed and just sleep the whole weekend um, i don't feel well it's getting really cold and i just got my double dose of flu and covid vaccine so my body is just really like stay in bed we need to preserve our energy but we can't do that because we run celsiology there are things that i need to buy and there are parcels that I need to ship so this order is two packages of our hexagon earrings in gold one of my friends who's been featured in the other vlogs before she always buys from me and always gifts my pieces to people she knows as wedding gifts or birthday gifts or whatever special occasion uh, it is she loves to support Celsiology so for this order, she ordered two sets of earrings because she's got two brides that she's friends with who are getting married and she wanted to give them as wedding gifts. So if I post this today, hopefully it will get to Melbourne in a week because it's standard shipping. And she'll be able to take one of the packs with them to Fiji because the wedding is in Fiji. So she wants to gift it then. Um, so yeah, let's, let's do that and come with me to run some errands. I love this post office. They're open on Saturdays, which is such a blessing when you run a business. So let's drop it off. Goodbye. All right, we've dropped off our parcel and let's go run some more errands. I really need to find a way to talk to you guys while I'm driving in the car because driving without pulling over like I'm pulling over now is the time where I can actually have a chat to you guys and talk to you guys a little bit more about everything that's happening the problem is I film with my phone not a camera so the Australian Federal Police New South Wales Police and Victoria Police love me they love to pull me over all the time when I'm driving so I don't want to give them another excuse to pull me over yeah let me figure that out one day especially because I'm about to drive to Melbourne again in June that would be a good time, that eight hour drive to talk to you guys, but we'll see. Most people in Canberra work nine to five jobs. So weekends are always packed at the shopping centers because this is usually the time where people run all their errands and do their shopping. Because late night shopping isn't really a thing here. I have to spend most of my afternoon doing grocery shopping, going to appointments, like getting my eyebrows done, you know, shopping for clothes. I got distracted here, I was buying some makeup. <laughs> um, and just getting everything done so that I have the rest of the weekend to do what I need to do. On this particular weekend, there was this cute little setup with small businesses in the shopping center where small businesses from around Canberra were selling their products. And I have been trying to get Salsiology into one of these markets and trying to get our foot in the door in the past. And when I tell you, I haven't had any luck. I haven't had any luck 
getting a stall at any of these markets. I'm definitely going to talk about this in another video because I think it's really important to be transparent about the business journey that I've had so far here in Canberra and how difficult it can be to get your foot in the door in a lot of these business spaces when you do not have a strong business network around you to support you. Stay tuned for that video because I'm going to be spilling the tea. On a positive note, I just want to say that I love Aldi. I don't know if you guys shop at Aldi, but Aldi has saved my butt many times since I've moved to Canberra. I don't know if you guys know, but the cost of living in Canberra is pretty expensive. So Aldi is like one of my favorite go-to places. Okay, I'm back at home. I'm eating food. I'm starving. I'm so hungry. Okay, now I can think straight. I was getting a bit hungry there. Now when I got home, I got a video call from no other than my best friend, Jasleen. <laughs> she is going to kill me when she finds out she's in this vlog because she didn't actually know I was recording the conversation and <laughs> filming it while we were talking. For context, Jasleen and I have been friends for over 13 years. She is probably one of the most important people in my life, apart from my family. So I'm very happy I get to introduce you guys to her, even though she'll probably kill me for putting her in a vlog. <laughs> Jasleen is a woman in STEM. She is a surgical theater nurse. This conversation is so funny to me right now because it's such an accurate representation of our friendship and just how funny our lives are now that they're so different. We both met at uni and we used to get into so much trouble in our teenage days. <laughs> Somehow I became the single auntie with a small business and a Venus flytrap for a pet. And Jasleen's the opposite. She is a wife now and she's got two beautiful daughters who I love very much. Jasleen's two daughters are my goddaughters. Sometimes when I'm feeling really down, I always make her call me so I can see them. They live in Sydney, so I don't get to see them often and I miss them a lot. And it makes me happy when I see their faces. And as the auntie, I am notorious for buying the daughters science related gifts. I low key want both the daughters to go into STEM. I'm that type of auntie. <laughs> so this is what I actually do during my downtime at night. I will put on a YouTube video about something I need to learn about the business. This is how I learn about everything in business. I learn off YouTube and I teach myself and I'll be doing something else on the side. So in, in this case, I am editing my YouTube thumbnails because there was a previous design that I was, wasn't happy with. So I'm going to make them all look similar. I'm interested in selling some digital products on my website. Um, I use Shopify as a platform, so I'm thinking of some digital products to sell to STEM women. Um, and I'm just wondering how Shopify can actually sell products that is not a physical product. So I'm learning how to do that at the moment. I have a few ideas um, that I, will, I think that would be great for STEM women. Um, I was looking at ebooks so i was looking at a few different things so i just want to know how to integrate that on my platform because right now i don't know how to do it i always watch my videos on times two speed by the way i know it's a bit weird but i can't stand it when the video is so slow and i am more productive when i'm doing two things at the same time so me sitting in front of the tv right now would have bored me to tears so i, I have to be doing something else to maintain my attention span i took myself out for brunch to answer a few emails for salesiology we have found the venue of my dreams in melbourne to potentially run my event at i can't say it yet but i will keep you guys updated how you doing girl oh you're beautiful today hey are those new traps are you growing new traps how cute. 
Well, you look beautiful. There's a few flies in the house, Venus. Why are you not eating them? I might have to catch a few to feed you because I have nothing to feed you this week. You're meant to be eating them all. You're meant to be attracting them and trapping them. So this is Venus. She's my fly trap plant. Um, she is a few weeks old and she's currently growing new traps at the moment, which are really cute. Fly traps are carnivorous plants, so they like to eat flies and all that sort of stuff. I bought her because we've had a few insects in the apartment, so I was hoping she could eat them, but she's not doing any of that. So I don't know if I bought a vegan fly trap. I don't know what her dietary requirements are, but she's not eating those. I have to kill them and then feed it to her because she's bougie like that. But these traps are like specialized leaves, so they can undergo photosynthesis and should go out in the sun as much as possible. Just because the traps aren't equipped to undergo photosynthesis like leaves are apparently. That's what a entomologist at work told me. So yeah, I don't know. Some of her traps are dying though. So I'm a bit worried. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. This is my brain cactus. If you've watched my previous vlogs, you will know that I bought this from Melbourne. She's thriving. She's living her best life. She's low maintenance. Unlike Venus, who is very high maintenance for a fly trap. She just does her thing. She just wants to get like watered once every week, couple of weeks. And she just, you know, does her own thing, which we like. We like an independent queen, don't we? This is me making some YouTube content for the fortnight. I use my weekends to film because I can't really film when I work nine to five. The lighting is really bad at night now that it gets darker really early. So I'll film content on the weekends and then edit it throughout the week and then release them. I'm trying to release content every fortnight. So Monday to Friday, nine to five, I work a full-time job in public health and I run sociology outside of those hours after work and on the weekends. I managed to film some content of what my work routine is like. This is me looking like the wife of a mafia leader in my faux fur coat heading to work. During my lunch break, I went to visit a new bakery that opened up near my work called Three Mills. If you haven't heard of Three Mills Bakery before, they are very popular in Canberra because they supply most of the baked goods to a lot of the restaurants around here. Today was the first day the bakery opened, so people were so excited. This day at work was particularly busy, so I had to stay back a little bit to get some work done. I was listening to Doja Cat's new album I'm in the car, which is bomb, and had some dinner as soon as I got home because I was starving at this point. I was very ready to just put on a robe and just be lazy on the couch and just watch Bridgerton for the rest of the night. <laughs> Depending on the week, I will use weeknights to create content for TikTok and Instagram. I also pack orders so that they're ready for shipping in the morning. I'll drop them off at the post office the next morning before I go to work. Now I have been waiting for this parcel for months now. And the story behind this parcel is a perfect example of how frustrating business can actually be. So this shipment was our Salsiology jewelry boxes. There was a hundred of them in this particular order that I made, including some sample boxes that I wanted to have a look at that my manufacturer had. This order was meant to come in months ago because I placed an order as we were running really low on stock. But somehow that first order that got shipped out got sent to a really old address of mine in Melbourne. I was so lucky that the people who now live in that old address of mine, they actually rang me up to tell me that there was a parcel there 
And when I realized what happened, I, I get, I called my family up because luckily they lived a few streets away from that house where that shipment got delivered. I asked them to go pick it up and put it in a safe place. So I had a bit of a dilemma. I was running out of boxes here in Canberra and I was worried that I wouldn't be able to fulfill orders if we ran out of them. And the shipment of boxes ended up in Melbourne. Luckily they were with my family though. So the manufacturer had to reproduce all the boxes again, including samples, and send it to the correct address, which added a lot of delays to this particular shipment. In business, a lot of these things happen beyond our control, and it gets really frustrating, but I think in business it's really important to see the positives in every situation. That's that's how I try to live my life anyway, at least. So, for example, even though... A shipment got sent to Melbourne and another shipment had to be delayed to ship to Canberra I now have instead of 100 boxes that I paid for I now have 200 of them in two different locations which actually is a benefit for my business I got free boxes two sets of samples one is already shipped to Melbourne which I go to frequently and the other one came to Canberra so you know there's a silver lining in everything I guess this is me having a look at all the different sample boxes that came in with this order. I always order samples from my manufacturers whenever they bring in new items and new products. I always like to think about the different ways we can upgrade our packaging and make our packaging more efficient because we are getting larger sales that have more items in a sale, if that makes sense. So we want to make sure that we are efficient, but also not wasting so much material in packaging so I always try to see what's out there now in business one of the more tedious tasks that you need to do um, especially when you own a business like jewelry is that whenever you are bringing in stock and ordering stock in from a manufacturer you always have to count everything and you always have to check the quality of every single piece once you open the box. One thing that I've learned in business is that you always take photo evidence of an issue with a particular product so that you can use that evidence to get refunds or to make the manufacturer redo and resend those faulty items to you. After checking this shipment, everything was fine. The quality of the boxes were immaculate, so I was really thankful for that. There is no better feeling than restocking your items. As you can see from this clip, I was down to the last three boxes. So I was stressing. I was stressing out, but it's all right. We made it. It's good. Orders can still continue. In the next clip, I was playing around with different samples and seeing how they fit in our magnetic boxes. I wanted to see if thinner boxes would be more ideal to fit more pieces in there. So I was just having a bit of a play around to have a look at the sizing. Just picked these up from the post office. So these are the poly mailer bags that I send parcels in. They're from Hero Packaging or Hero Pack. They are compostable mailers. I bought the smaller sizes, I bought 50 of those, and I bought bigger ones. Um, oh God, I think these are too big. No, did I buy the wrong ones? Just because we're starting to get orders that are larger now with multiple pack packages in them, and we're about to launch our snapbacks as well, which have boxes that are huge. So yeah, just wanted to buy a larger size and a smaller size and there should be 50 each so I have to sit here and count them all now. This is an example of why we count everything that gets shipped to us. I had to take this offline and count it without filming because I wanted to make sure that I was correct and I ordered a hundred of these larger ones and I am missing one. One is not a big deal but if this was something more expensive, like a piece of jewelry, um, it would be an incredibly big deal. So I will just email Hero Packaging and just let them know. I was feeling really creative this afternoon. And 
when I get a burst of creativity for the business, I take the time out to make sure that I dedicate this time to designing new pieces. One thing I've learned about creativity and the creative process is that it is really difficult to be in that creative mindset when you are stressed all the time. So for me, I've noticed that my creativity tends to peak a lot after a period of rest and rejuvenation. And it makes sense because I have been sick the past couple of weeks. All I've been doing is resting. And when you're in that period of rest, um, where you're taking the time to just be still, like not doing a lot, not thinking about a lot of things, that is when the best ideas come to you. This is just something that I've learned just from self-awareness over the years. So a routine that I do is that I will take some snacks, a warm blanket and all my electronics up to the rooftop of my apartment. I'll sit and chill, listen to some good music, watch the view and just get the good vibes. And then I'll just start creating and playing around with ideas. Now I had a burst of creativity to create four new pieces during this time. I took some samples from downstairs and I drew up some measurements and started of putting together ideas to send to my engineer to create into a 3d model now i'm dying to tell you guys what these pieces are but i don't like to make announcements until i'm 100 percent sure they can be made the thing about our pieces and i've said this before our designs are quite complicated to make and they're very unique so just because i have an idea and i'm translating it into a potential jewelry model that doesn't mean that the jewelry pieces can be made it really depends on a lot of different factors when i'm sure you guys will be the first to know I took a bit of a break to just admire the sunset. I love coming up onto the rooftop to work. I actually um, come to the rooftop to stargaze as well. I own a telescope, which reminds me in the next vlog, I'll probably need to put the telescope together. I'll film it so you guys can come stargazing with me. It's really fun. I switched tasks as well. I um, wanted to do a bit more research about how to grow the youtube channel and i'm also trying to develop a faster system for me to make videos and youtube thumbnails and things so that i can publish more i get so immersed in my work sometimes that i forget that it's pitch black outside and it's time to go to sleep on sunday i like to go out for brunch with the girls to catch up with them this is kingston for sure it's one of my favorite places to go to in Canberra and I just had breakfast and it was so cold outside. Everyone had their little Kathmandu jackets on. It was such a vibe. I had to pack orders tonight because we had an order that was getting shipped to America, which is really exciting. So when I get orders on the weekends, because post offices are closed on a Sunday, I have to make sure the orders are packed on the Sunday night so that they're shipped straight away the Monday morning before I start work. I have a couple of videos in mind that I want to upload on YouTube very soon. One of them will be an in-depth packing video to show you guys my packaging process and the thought process behind everything that I do. As I've mentioned in previous videos, everything about Salsiology has been created or designed by me, including the packaging. I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about behind the scenes, how I designed everything and, you know, the, the method to my madness, basically. It's very normal for me to be packing orders at 9, 10 p.m. at night. As you can see with my flashlight on, the apartment was really dark. My phone does this thing where it just automatically turns the flash on when I'm filming and the lighting's bad. Uh, the quality of the video is not really good, but when I was designing the packaging for Celsiology, I had two things in mind. The first one was aesthetics and the second one was durability. I had a strong belief that our packaging shouldn't just be pretty. The packaging needs to do the job that it's supposed to do and keep our jewelry pieces safe during long transits to other countries or other states. So keep an eye out for that video soon. Right, let's go to the post office and drop this bad boy off. It's going to America, our first American order. I'm excited. It's going to Florida. And that was a week in my life 
running Salsiology camper edition. Not so much travel involved, but I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. Please let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. Have a good day.